this is Greg Deckler for Enterprise DNA. And today we're going to be talking about kind of one of my uh, favorite little constructs that I tend to use. Um, and I think is quite overlooked within the DAX community sometimes. And as you can see on the screen, I'm talking about the DAX uh, table constructor. So I think this is kind of an o overlooked uh, expression or construct within DAX. Now, there's a few blog articles out there on it. There are a few videos out there on it. And I don't think it gets a lot of love from the DAX community, it, not a lot of focus, um, but it's kind of one of my go-tos that I use quite often in a number of my quick measures that I've created for the quick measure gallery. Um, and it's just a handy little thing to know about um, that I think that, uh, you know, the functions get all the love in DAX, but this one doesn't happen to be a function. It's it's kind of like an operator or you know, a construct, um, kind of like uh, the in operator it doesn't get a lot of love sometimes. Um, so today I'm going to be going through and showing you what the DAX table constructor is and then showing you some real world examples of where I've used this uh, construct uh, in my DAX measures for like the quick measure gallery or different scenarios where it comes in really, really handy. Um, and by hopefully by the end of this video, you'll agree with me and start finding ways to incorporate the DAX table constructor into your own DAX measures and columns and tables. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've got a couple of different tables that I've created, and the first one is really, really simple. Here I've I've created a, a table, table one equals, and you can see the DAX constructor is just the curly braces, okay? So the curly braces, and then you can put in there uh, different values uh, separated by commas. And so I've got pickle, banana, and grapefruit, and then those become different rows within that table. And so that's probably the easiest example that you're going to see out there. And of course, you're probably telling me at this point, well, Greg, you know, I can I can accomplish that with an enter data query just as easily. And that's true. But um, this does have the advantage of that you can actually embed this uh, within a uh, DAX measure, for example. So you could create a table var and you could create this uh, table here. And I'll show you some examples of that later on. The other advantage this has is there's no reason to jump into Power Query. <laughs> if you need to change something in this table. So by constructing this as like a table constructor in that, I can just remain right in Power BI Desktop. And if I need to edit any values in the table, I can just come in here to the table and just edit them. Um, so, I mean, versus, you know, now I've got to fire up, I got to go home, you know, I've got to go and do my transform of my, of my data and jump into Power Query and then go edit the data and then come back. And it's really kind of a hassle. And so this is kind of a, you know, a speedier way of, of doing that kind of stuff uh, versus like an editor data query for like simple data, if you will. Now, next example I'm gonna show you is something you can't do in, in an editor data query. So here's table two. So in this table right here, so and as you can see, the table constructor, there's my curly braces, but I also have uh, the left paren and the right paren. And that defines a row with multiple columns in it. So here I've got four columns. I've got my pickle, and then I have a date, so that's something you can't do in an enter data query. You can't uh, use DAX functions right within your table definition. Um, and then I'm also using the currency function, and then number four, and then I've got my banana and grapefruit rows. And as you can see, now I didn't do anything uh, with to this. This is exactly how it came back. So it actually recognized that the value one is a text field, that the value two is a date field or date time field, value three is a currency field, or column, and value four is a whole number column. I didn't have to do anything. Um, I didn't have to go in and select each one and then go in and, you know, go into column tools and say format it this way or that way. It figured all of that out um, just from the DAX code, which is really super handy. Um, again, something you can't do with an enter data query. So again, you can create uh, just single column tables. You can create multiple column tables with this. You can, it respects your uh, your data types and figures that out automatically. So pretty, pretty handy. Um, all right, so now the next one I'm gonna show you, and I define this as, a, and this is more kind of a real world example. So what I did was I defined this table as, I didn't have to do it this way, but I went ahead and defined this table again as a table construction. And you can see I have five, uh, columns here, keyword one, keyword two, three, four, five. Um, and now I wanted what I wanted to show you this is that 
one thing about the table constructor that you have to know is if you define a table with uh, multiple columns, then each of those rows has to have the same amount of columns. So if I get rid of a column, then you can see that it says each tuple in table constructor must have the same number of columns. And so that's the reason why I have these double quotes here, or I could use blank if I wanted to. Um, and that way I just fill up my, my keyword values. Um, and something I should mention, um, back here, if I only have one column defined, then it comes back and the actual column name is called value. And that's pretty important. Uh, and that's always the case if you just have a single column uh, and you're using a table constructor, then your column is going to be called a value. If you have multiple columns defined as part of your table constructor, then as you can see down below, I have a value one, a value two, a value three, value four, and value five columns. So very important. Um, there's, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's not intuitive necessarily, but they will show up in uh, your your DAX uh, type ahead, uh, IntelliSense, if you will, that they, these things will show up in DAX IntelliSense and you can use them. But it may be a little confusing if you're just starting to use these in terms of, well, you know, what are these columns called? Because I haven't actually defined what the names of these columns are. Well, they're always value if it's just a single column and value one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, if it's multiple columns. All right, so let's see a real world example. And this actually comes out of a uh, question that appeared on the forums. And what they were doing is they wanted to be, they had these five keyword columns, right? And they wanted to be able to concatenate them up, but they didn't want the extra commas. So here, if we had a concatenate fail one, this is what they were trying to do. They were saying, look, you know, give me the value one column. And then, you know, I use my ampersand, my concatenation operator, put a comma, then value two, value three, value four, value five, et cetera. Except as you can see, I get all of these, you know, commas in here because, you know, we have blank values for them, but you know, this, this DAX code doesn't know any better on how to filter that out. So the first one that I came up with is I like, well, you could probably union these together and then, um, you know, and then filter it out for blanks and then go from there. So I created this. Uh, the problem with union though is that i needed to uh, be able to select the actual column and union wants a table um, so i thought okay well i'll just use select columns and i'll select that you know value of that column out of that table except that doesn't work <laughs> because you know your keyword as you can see down below here um, i get the same for every single row um, and the reason that is that's the case is that i'm when I'm using select columns, I'm kind of breaking row context. Um, so that doesn't really work that very well. As you can see, again, I'm a union my stuff together, and then I result, you know, I have my result of concatenate X. You know, I still have my commas in there, but I didn't need to go any further with this solution because it's obviously wrong. Um, so what's the solution? Well, the solution is to use your table constructor. So by Creating a, a table constructor, I can just put in my value one, two, three, four, five. I'm not breaking row context, row context, and then I can filter that for any of the value. Remember, you know, if I have a single column table, then the column that's going to result from that is going to be value as a, a column name. I can just filter that for anything that's not blank, and then in my result, I can just concatenate X that up that table the value column and a comma to separate them. And now, as you can see down here, I have my keyword, I have my keyword four and just my keyword two and keyword five, no extra commas, nothing like that. So really a pretty nice little, uh, easy little solution here uh, to that problem. And the key to it, it's really just using the table constructor um, to be able to come back with a single table you know, I've got a bunch of scalar values. I just want to dump into a, a table and then I could actually use uh, table functions like filter and concatenate X and things like that. And that's a really handy thing to have at your disposal. So next thing I wanted to show you just real quickly is a couple of real world examples where I've used this. Um, and I didn't, um, that all of the ones where I'm using, like these are, this comes out of uh, when I was uh, converting all the Excel functions to DAX. Um, so there's this base function, there's things like 
converting um, Roman no numbers to uh, Arabic and Arabic to Roman numerals and things like all kinds of stuff like that. And in all of those cases, I use the table constructor, as you can see here, I used it to store uh, my conversions, right? So 10 is equal to A, 11 is equal to B, C, et cetera, all the way down to Z. Um, and the reason I did that is, and the nice thing about this is that it's self-contained, right? It, you know, I could have gone and created another table in the data model, and then you had this uh, measure use that table. But the nice thing about this, in my opinion, is that, you know, by having the, the actual table construction of the uh, conversion values in here, then, you know, it's all contained within this one single measure, and I can share it out, and everybody can see it, and there's no dependencies at all. It's just all self-contained, which I think is nice. And so I did the same kind of thing, right, with uh, gamma. So gamma is a kind of a crazy calculation. Um, but as you can see from my p-values, I just created a simple uh, table construction. In this case, it happens to, you know, it happens to have uh, two columns for each one. And again, you just have to keep track of, you know, what your table names are, what your column names are for the table that you create. Um, and so I used it in gamma. And then I also used it in this in my original text to table which has been, you know, underg undergone some uh, improvements over time. But as you can see here, uh, one of the use cases up top here was find the distinct occurrences of vowels A, E, I, O, U, or find the distinct occurrences of when, given, and then. And so what I did for those was in my, you know, in the top measure there, I have my underscore underscore vowels measure where I just feed it, you know, my A, E, I, O, U as my vowels, and that creates a nice little table then that I can then use in my intersect function later on after I've kind of broken the uh, the, the text into a table itself. Um, and now I can then count the distinct rows of that. Um, same similar thing with down here where I can just, my find variable has my when, given, and then, um, you know, very similar. And then the last example I'll show is my, is the XOR function. So the XOR function, right, is, you know, well, Hopefully you all know what an XOR does. Uh, if not, it's easy to Google it or Bing it. Um, but basically what I'm doing here is then I grab my scalar values of my logical one and my logical two. And then, but I want to use a filter and count rows on those. So again, it's kind of similar to what I showed with the keywords, right? I just can convert that to a table using the table constructor there in the underscore underscore table variable. And I can even use my convert uh, con function to make sure that these are Boolean values. Um, and then I do a count rows of which, you know, how many rows are true essentially. And it's if it's even, then it's false. If it's not even, then it's true. It's odd, just like X were supposed to work. So that's it for this uh, video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this table constructor video and know a little bit more about what it is and how it works and some of its use cases. Again, I, I endlessly find use cases for this thing where sometimes I'll end up with a scalar value and I'm like, well, I'd really need to use this this table function on it. And it's and it's so easy. It's like, oh, all I have to do is just wrap that in uh, in my curly braces and poof, it's a table. And now I can use table functions on it. So that's all I had for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you all next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.